Hello, my name is Amy Smith. I am a songwriter and artist with Asperger's Syndrome, founder of the Circle Inception Incorporated, and author of Nine Crazy Dreams. The Circle's Edge is a 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to fight loneliness, isolation, rejection, and bullying. But this resolves a vastly overlooked but painfully urgent need in society, acceptance, and the need to belong. And you can help a lonely, isolated, autistic person's life and help stop bullying with every book and purchase you make through our site, circlesedge.org. That's C I R C L E S, like five or six circles or triangles or squares. C I R C L E S, edge, like an edge of this couch, E D G E. That's circlesedge.org. And by reposting this video to your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and other social media accounts. Nine Crazy Dreams is a collection of nine of my weirdest dreams throughout my life written as science fiction short stories. This is the first book in this series of science fiction shorts about my crazy odd dreams. The follow-up to this inceptive book is called Nine More Crazy Dreams. <laughs> It will be available soon. However, you can pre-order this and various other books right now from our website today at circlesedge.org. Today, I'll be reading an excerpt from the Chronicles of Earth series, part one, City in the Sky. So without further ado, and with the need of my reading glasses now, it begins with a very futuristic looking earth and what seems to be a semi-automated utopian type city in the sky. It appears there are a group of city structures that extend far into the atmosphere. These buildings are tall, high in the sky, self-contained, semi-automated structures. Inside their city structure, aside their city structures are humans and hybrids who are mixed with and look just like humans outside of the electronic circuit connectors on their palms of their hands. The majority of the citizens living there are appear to be of white European descent. However, you do see blacks and diverse people of color. The city structures are predominantly round. They are somehow created and formed out of the mountains with the metallic exoskeleton an interior tower-like structure. At the top of the mountain are the resident high-rises and self-contained city in the sky. At the edge of each city is an electronic force field, fence barrier surrounding. Excuse me, I guess I said that wrong. At the edge of each city is an electronic force field boundary surrounding. However, from the outside, on ground level looking up, it appears the cities don't even start until they hit the sky because the mountain structure is transparent. The city in the sky is made up of a tall metallic structure, structure similar to Seattle's Space Needle, all the way up deep into the stratosphere. This metallic structure is surrounded by mountains and hills. On every level, there is an outside courtyard park area with lakes, hills, and streams. You could literally walk from the very top of the city all the way down to ground level without ever using an elevator or steps, or for that matter, needing an oxygen mask from the thin atmosphere. So go figure all of that. On the outskirts of one of the city structures, we see a renegade outcast named Willie. Willie, or Will as he called himself, has been surviving like a rebel for years on the edge of one of the structures next to the next, on the edge of one structure to the next. He looks rugged and rough because he lives off of what he can hunt, fish, and the vegetation that he's able to replant and grow. He is able to luckily bathe and wash his clothes in the streams nearby, as well as consume and drink it as drinking water. Conveniently, daily activity Daily activities are generally performed near the middle and top of the city. The only activity that happens near the base is maintenance, which is mostly automated. 
It's unclear how long Willie has been living at the edge of the structure, nor what exactly occurred to make him become an outcast of this kingdom. Many times, if you are rebellious or break the law, the punishment is banishment out of the city altogether into the land of the barbaric humans. One day, a few of the cyborgs who overlooked the automated maintenance systems at the base of the city noticed something peculiar on the edge. When they went to investigate, they discovered Willie eating and washing his clothes. Now forced to relocate, Willie took off running again. The cyborgs chased after him along with a few of the hybrids. They chased Willie around the base of the structure. Willie somehow slid past the electronic gate and ran into the parking garage near the bottom. Willie jumped over a boulder, ran through another parking garage, then slid underneath a bend in the electronic field, electronic force field barrier, and to the onto the outside of the entire city structure altogether. He just barely escapes the machines and hybrids as they chase him down boulders, rocks, and strings to ground level, taking cover at a new border. Willie knew it was unsafe to stay around the mountain base, the mountain space. He was able to observe how some of the expelled humans who got sanctuary became infested and how the cyborgs were indiscriminately killing humans off. Worst off, even after you shot, stabbed, and tried to kill the infested human off, they would get back up, shot up and all, and become even more aggressive. It was hard to kill an infested human. Thusly, Willie ran off to the next city structure in the sky and began seeking a discreet hiding spot with fresh running water to survive off. The city structure that was, that was the next one over was a university town. I was enrolled in the university, taking classes and living life as usual, oblivious to any problems going on outside of the city structure. Willie was living on the edge of the university. The people in this university city were a bit more tolerant, welcoming, and willing to let him sneak into their dorms, take showers, and eat in the student center. As long as he was able to blend in, he was never detected, which actually was quite hard, which actually was quite a hard thing to do. The university in this the university was hosting freshman orientation the week Willie arrived. There was a new student named Jim, who I guess during freshman orientation got lost. I was going downstairs to the student center grocery store and I caught myself helping Jim who got lost. Jim, Jim somehow wandered into my building lobby during her campus tour. I couldn't understand how she or anyone could ever be lost here. There is an information booth every few blocks all over campus. They even have a fancy phone system where you can call on your cell phone and say you're lost and a hologram will appear and escort you to wherever you're going. Jim is fully human, but was lucky enough to be born in the city structure because her human mother and father were both professors at the university. She has never been outside the city structure except to go to another city. She was rebellious and curious about life outside of her four walls. Even though she never wanted to go to the human world, she wanted a bit more adventure and excitement and wished to travel. She was wild, curious, fascinated, quite rebellious, and fun to hang with. As I tried to help Jim find her tour group, we noticed Dale, who was another human. Jim was fascinated with Dale and they spoke a brief bit. The dorm rooms at the base of the university towns are very nice, sleek, and modern. They have a state-of-the-art gym, entertainment center, and student center. There are fancy state-of-the-art dorms where three or four students would share a room. Of course, the further you went up, however, the fancier the dorm was, but is. I was graduating, so I was near the top. Above me is where the grad students and PhD students live the vanishing of the students. About a year and a half later, I was in my last year of university and Jim was a junior. 
One afternoon, I noticed Will and Jim eating lunch under a tree. I went up and asked them where everyone was. No one showed up for class, and the campus center and the campus center was is empty. Jim and Willie already had begun to notice that weird things were going on, such as less and less people were in class, the library, and going to the university center for lunch, and on the campus altogether. Every day seems like more and more people were disappearing. By the end of the semester, it, it appeared that everyone had begun to vanish. There seemed to be no humans left, no students left, and very few hybrids left as well. The last week of the semester, we went on a hunt looking for people. Where did everyone go? We looked around and noticed that everyone in Jim's first class was gone. Our dorm was empty as well. We ended up going through the university trying to hunt and gather as many people still around. We went to the libraries and throughout the various university stores. Oops. We went to the libraries and throughout the various university buildings on campus trying to locate people, but the campus was sparse and very few people left around. <laughs> well, outside of my typos or talking oaths, <laughs> I hope, in fact, I'm sure that you enjoyed this thrilling excerpt of the Chronicles of Earth series part one, City in the Sky, which is one of the stories inside Nine Crazy Dreams, which you can pre-order today. And with, every per and, if, and with every purchase, a portion of the proceeds goes towards our services, outreach programs, and social activities, such as our weekly support group on Thursdays in Albany, New York, or our virtual seminars and meetings held worldwide. So log on to circlesedge.org today to order this edge of your seat thriller, which is a great read for teens and adults alike and help make a difference in the world. My name is Amy Smith, and I thank you in advance for sharing and reposting this video to your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and social media accounts, and for your support. Bye-bye.